All right, so hopefully <clears throat> this go round we're not as pixelated. But again, my name is Berhenda and I'm a visionary empath coach and I work with visionary empathic women on creating uh, businesses that are sustainable. I really call them mission-based businesses where they have a mission that is so much larger than themselves where they're using their empathic gifts. So you may ask, what is an empath? An empath is someone who can sense the thoughts, feelings, and emotions of another person as if it were their own. And the women that we have on here tonight, Chauncey Beatty and Sonny Patterson, are both um, extraordinarily talented poets in their own right, but they're both certified coaches and they're both phenomenal TEDx presenters. They have taken their works um, all over the world, have taken it to all places and stages. Hey, Kathleen. Um, hey, Donatella. And these women are currently um, working together actually for the last 10 years actually they have worked together to bring healing and transformation through the heart for women particularly marginalized voices and women of color and so I invited them both on to talk about their journey as being empaths and one of the greatest tools that an empath can have is one many tools but poetry is a great tool journaling writing catharsis to get the excess energy out of your bodies but also because empaths are channels and they receive messages poetry is a great way to communicate <clears throat> rather difficult emotions hey chauncey awesome so i'm going to go ahead and add um, poetry is one of the ways in which we can express ourselves. Hey, sis, how are Hi you? Hi there. Hey, and you sound great. Hi. Awesome. Can you... Yep, I'm I can here. see you, and I can hear you. So I'm just waiting for Sunny to come Sunny. back on. The, yep, come back on the page, and then we're ready to rock and roll. So I just uh, loaded up an introduction for you. Perfect. And the heart-centered work that you are doing for for women, um, the coaching that you have available the poetry as a catharsis. So, um, you know, I'm so grateful to to have you on this evening and for you to share your light with us because you are absolutely amazing. So here's Sister Sunny. Yes, yeah, she's here. You see her? Yeah, I see her. So interesting. <clears throat> it said that I already have a guest and I can't bring her on. Can you bring her on? Oh, wow. Let's see. How does that work? So... In your time, on your timeline, on your feed, do you see people coming up, kind of scrolling? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Do you see Sunny? I do. Click bring her um on camera. Um, it's not allowing it. Okay. Yeah, it's not allowing it. Um, perhaps you can talk to me for a while and then go mm -hmm. to her. Yep, that sounds okay. Great. Yep, so we'll definitely do it that way. So, Sunny, give us about 10, 15, but feel free to chime in. You can leave a message down here um, as well, because, Sunny, we're going to bring you on next um, because you have a, I know you have a word for us. So, Tonsi, if you can explain um, to us, as far as you know and understand, the heart. A lot of times we think of the heart as kind of like this romantic space. Mm -hmm. But the heart is also the seat of our courage. So can you share with us how you use your heart in the work that you do in the world? Thank you. Um, I would probably say more than anything, I think the heart is probably most important to our human experience. So I'm known in the world as the heart worker. Um, and I got that moniker many years ago, actually, um, before I became really um, a coach, it was actually through poetry. Mm -hmm. um, a guy came up to me and he said, your poetry does hard work, but it also does heart work. And mm -hmm. from that, um, the moniker stuck. But I believe that the heart really is a portal. I believe it's a portal um, to the divine. Um, and I think that when we look from, when we look at, scripture and when we look at um how the heart is communicated um more so from a spiritual standpoint um it's all we're always asked and required to and mandated to purify our hearts mm. um and i think that that is because it is actually the filtering system for our human experience because it's the hub of our emotional center right and so um 
And so in much of the work that I'm doing, I'm just helping people to identify what they're carrying in their heart and what they need to release, but also what they are carrying in their heart that they have not released in terms of their calling or their work in the world. Absolutely. Chauncey, see, you, I, I didn't want to get to preaching tonight, <clears throat> but you're about, you about, you about to take me there. <laughs> and it's all good. So, you know, I was listening to Sarah Jakes Roberts this morning as part of my meditation. She said something really interesting about um, having the courage to push through. And when you talk about the heart being what connects us to the divine, you want to talk about it from a divine standpoint. She talked about the push through and the woman that touched the hem of his garment. Mm -hmm. so that she could receive the power to transform. Can you share with us um, a supernatural experience that you've had um, either writing your poetry or being a vessel in terms of helping to be a facilitator of transformation, especially in your workshops and your coaching practice? Hmm. Ooh. To identify, I mean, it's hard for me to just identify one moment. I'm sure. I think that... <laughs> I'm sure because that's how you that, that's how you get down. <laughs> yeah. I think that um in this work, um, and I and I don't even really feel like it's super deep in the sense of my work. I think that our work in the world as humans mm -hmm. is really to move out of the way so that we can hear. Right. Mm -hmm. And so I think that um um all the time when I'm facilitating, um, I have had to learn. And I usually, I'm usually good at this. I don't always get it right. But to be obedient to mm -hmm. what I'm hearing, what I'm feeling, um, what I'm being instructed to say, that's yeah. not always easy, um, especially because I still, I feel like I'm a, I have pretty tough skin, but not really, right? Like I'm actually <laughs> super sensitive. <laughs> so, yeah. And so there have been times where I'm facilitating, I'm coaching, and I know that I'm being instructed to say something in particular or challenge something or push uh, push back on something or help somebody go maybe a little bit further than they've gone mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and that's not always easy because as a coach and especially if you're doing hard work you're touching in spaces that people haven't touched themselves touching the um, tenders right touching the um, tenders your feedback for them or your processing them will often be uh, their payback to you, right? You you gonna get it, right? So there's never a time. I mean, there, I always when I'm coaching somebody, there's always a time where uh, my coaching clients will be like, "Oh, you know, there was a time where I was really upset with you," or, you know, and um, I have learned how to um, be okay with that and be and I already know, I already know that there's gonna be a time where they're going to be upset with mm -hmm. <laughs> what comes up. <laughs> Yeah. Mm -hmm. I don't I know that may not have directly answered the supernatural. I don't know if there's mm -hmm. anything more specific that you Yeah, I mean I believe that um just automatically as a coach and one who feels deeply and so prophetic, intuitive, you know, whatever label you want to put on it, that's that's you you're a gap stander. And so mm -hmm. in in that gap standing, it's not always comfortable for you and it's not always comfortable for them for you to deliver sometimes hard truth. Mm -hmm. but this is what you've been called to do and they obviously signed up for it as well right <laughs> but right. but I think the point that I was getting at is just leaving yourself to be available you make yourself available for this heart work you leave yeah. yourself available um to ask tough questions that I know are coming that's coming through you mm-hmm and uh, maybe you're not their best friend this week. They put you on time. Oh, I'm, not ta I'm not talking to my coach this week. I'm mad at her. <laughs> yeah. But growth doesn't, I mean, growth doesn't always feel good. When we think about alignment, a lot of times, you know, we see that. We like we think alignment is pretty. Well, when we go to the chiropractor and get that spine crack, um, right. no. <laughs> right, right, right. Yeah, 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 in the moment. So I, I would like for you to please share with us, um, you know, there's a powerful movement that you have been cultivating along mm -hmm. with uh, with Sonny, who we'll hear from in just a moment. And if you, I feel like you guys are like midwives. You know, mm -hmm. you're helping to birth women so they can rebirth themselves. If mm -hmm. you can share more about uh, the conference and and what the objectives are. 
Sure. Um, and that's, that's funny that you say that because uh, the retreat p participants started calling us spiritual mirror wives. Um, so the Ready Woman Retreat is in its seventh year this uh, year. And so it's a retreat, Ooh. actually. People will often say conference, but it's a retreat. And I'll tell you why I'm making that distinction, distinction. in a second. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, but we're in our seventh year. Sunny and I um, are actually in our 10th year of working together, which is exciting. Um, and that's just been a blessed experience just from the standpoint of like women collaborating, black women collaborating. And um, we have been able to just really usher a synergy. Like Sunny and I could just, if somebody was <laughs> behind the scenes watching us prepare, they would be like, <laughs> what are they talking about? Cause we'll just like kind of dive into like a topic. And mm -hmm. then from that, um, of, um, uh, a process will come <laughs> both of us specialize in experiential learning mm -hmm. and so um it uh, at our retreats and really this goes into why it's a retreat and not a conference so it's not just giving you information right um, and the reason why it's experiential is people are smart they're very smart and so like when you think about talk therapy um you know, you can outsmart your therapist. Somebody yes. might have gone to a therapist and um, and they are heady people. And so they rationalize, they, um, they uh, confirm for themselves how they write. And when you're doing experiential learning, we go straight to the heart, right? So, or we might be exploring how you're thinking or what your core thoughts are that are... Um, come on, um, cognitive. Yeah, but come <laughs> on with the mega cognitive. Come on. That um, show you how you're moving through space and time, right? Mm -hmm. And so um, that's really our goal, um, to create a uh, sacred space for them to explore. How am I moving through space and time? Mm -hmm. And how do I want to move? right mm -hmm. um so we're in our seventh year um and i am so excited i have you're the first place where i'm announcing this so you have the exclusive <laughs> um mm -hmm. we are going to new orleans this year and so it's usually i um host a retreat close to me i'm um, based in south carolina right now and so usually i do it like uh, within a two three hour radius of where i'm at just for to make it easier for myself but we've been wanting to do <laughs> new orleans for a while sunny is from new orleans uh -huh. and so we decided to um this is our seventh year um and the theme is um work hard play harder and so it's going to mm. be an excursion based all-inclusive retreat mm. five days four nights um we're going to use the city and culture as a learning lab um and Sonny and I have been like letting our imaginations go wild. And so we are just stoked about um, what this experience will be. We decided to keep it small um, so that it's a uh, powerful container for the circle of women who say yes to this opportunity. Um, mm -hmm. It's going to be August the 12th through the 16th, which is okay. basically um, Monday through Friday um, this summer. And um, yeah, that's what the Ready Woman Retreat is about. Giving me dear and everlasting life. I'm, 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 <laughs> I'm, I'm already there. So, <laughs> you know, of course I can talk to you forever and I want to make sure that we get, um, Sunny on as well. But as a, an empathic woman, one who feels deeply, um, gap stands for others, what is one piece of advice that you'd like to, to give to her so that she can pour or make sure that her cup stays full? Sure. Um, I think it's vital, especially for empaths, to realize that you are the caretaker of your heart. Mm -hmm. You are the caretaker of your heart. You are responsible for your sanity and your safety. Um, although we want others around us to, um, to participate in that mm -hmm. caretaking, in that management, in that protection of our heart and